Greetings and welcome to a new video about another discrete time system analysis. We continue with the stability analysis of discrete time systems and we will then use again the jury stability test for this. This will be our example number two. As we did in the previous video, we will work out the calculation step by step and also verify these in MATLAB simulations. So let's look at our problem for this case. Now in this case we have this system given which is a close to discrete time transfer function. Again, the numerator and denominator given here in blue here for the denominator. And this is a second order system. We have one zero at 0 0.81. And there, uh, we have two poles given by this expression when you equate that to zero. Again, the same question here, determine if this system is stable. So what we can do, let's work out this step by step. So the solutions, First, let's recognize the characteristic equation. Again, I said already this is equal to zero, so the d of z, that is then the characteristic equation. So we have several methods, and since this is a second order system, the things can be uh, also worked out in a different way. So I will now work out several methods, and we will also then see that we have the same conclusion. Of course, this is specifically for a second order system. If you have a higher order system, could be that you have for a specific method a lot of time to do. So for this case, for method one, we use just a quadratic formula. You know, when you work out a quadratic equation, you can use the, this quadratic formula, which is saying actually the following. You take the minus of this part, which is actually the, the, the coefficient before the z, plus or minus the square root of that coefficient again squared minus four times the coefficient before the z squared times the, the constant here, which you see here as 0 0.315. Now you take the square root of that one, divide by two times the, the coefficient of that uh, z squared. So if you work it out, and of course we have two z's, so z1 comma z2, uh, two, so we have one and two. So if you work it out, you will get 0 0.75, and the other one is 0 0.42. What does it mean? We have now two z um, solutions for the poles, and those are all in absolute form less than one. That means we have two poles inside the unit circle of the z-plane. So this system is stable. So this is the conclusion, which is drawing in, in a minute. If you have, of course, a second order system, if you have a third order system, you can still do that. There are methods, but at some point it is really, really difficult and almost impossible to work it out using hand calculations. Now let's then look at another uh, method, which is called the bilinear transformation. And this is mm, um, um, an approximation method. So the exact mapping from the Z plane to the S plane is given by this. So z is equal to e to the power st, where t is our sample period or sample time in seconds. But the approximation or approximate mapping from z plane to the s plane is given by this. So you can see z is equal to s plus 1 over s minus 1. So what we can do now is take that correct equation, this, and substitute for the z this expression. So you can see s plus 1 over s minus 1 quantity squared minus 1.17 times, again, the z plus that constant of 0 0.315 is equal to 0. Now what you get is actually an expression in terms of s, which is, of course, the same business as for the z. So we just work this out. First, left-hand side and the right-hand side multiplied by z minus 1 quantity squared. So you will lose this. You only have z s plus, I mean s minus one, I must say, quantity squared. So you will have s plus one quantity squared minus 1.17. Now you lose one s minus one, but you will still have one s minus one multiplied because you divide by uh, multiply by the square of that quantity. And you have the exact same quantity here for the multiplication of the constant. Now if you work this out you will get, just work out this parenthesis and take everything together, you will get s squared plus 9.49s plus 17.14 is zero. And what you recognize is different than this one. 
but we are not really interested in where the poles are actually. We will, we will like to know if this is the system is stable or not. That's all. So if I now move on, again using quadratic formula, I can say, just use this, I can say the similar form. So again, you place this one here, so you with a minus sign in front, and then plus or minus square root of that, square of that one, plus, I mean minus one, four times the coefficient of this one is one, times the 17.40. Now, if you work it out, you will get these two solutions. Now, you need to, of course, draw a different um, um, conclusion. I mean, and you, do, you draw your conclusion in a different form because you lo now look at the S-plane. Now, for S-plane, we need to have our poles in the left half plane. So, the all poles are on the left half plane of the S-plane because that is mandatory. That's the safe region. And again, we have the same conclusion. The system is stable. Okay, now let's also look another method, which is the root Herbert stability method, but via the bilinear transformation. So again, you need this method too. So what's saying actually now? Again, you get your characteristic equation. We have this. You first look at the second order polynomial and we now recognize the coefficient. So we have the one, 9.49 and 17.14. Now, root Herbert's table is given here. We know that for a second order, we need s to the power 0, 1, and 2. And you place your coefficient in this fashion, so a2, a1, a0, and this is just 0. And you have now the, also the value. So b1, and we need to check now the first column, I, I must say, for sign changes. If there is any sign change in this first column, that is really the important part of this table, then we can say, this system is not stable. Now, the B1 is given by this expression. You can see again, there is a matrix build up for this B1 by these two columns. So, the A2, A1, A0, just 0. We have this, and you divide by this. So, it's a little bit different than the jury test. So, the jury test is, has a different expression. And then you work out the determinant here, place a minus sign, divide by the A1 here, and you will get 17.40. So let's now check now, because this is not really interesting. You can, of course, calculate that in the similar form. But let's now check the first column. We have now 1, which is positive. Then 9.49, again positive, so I don't see any sign changes yet. And this is also 17.14. So no sign changes so far. So it means in this column, I don't see any sign changes. So no sign changes, the system is stable. So in three methods, using three different methods, we have the same conclusion. Stable system, stable system, stable system. Now let's then look at the method four, which is the jury stability test. And then develop again our conditions. Now again, our correct equation, of course, we need to work out that in the Z domain. This is, these are the co coefficients, so we have the a2 is 1, a1 is minus 1.17, and a0 is 0 0.315. So how does it work? First step is check the first conditions. Now let's do that. Now we know we have the first condition, which is a0 must be, absolute value of that one must be less than the a n. We know n is 2 because we have a second order system, that means a0 must be less than a2. So absolute value of A0 must be less than A2. Absolute value of that A0 is the same as 0 0.315, which is indeed less than 1 because there's already 1 here. So the first condition is met. Second one is that the denominator, so our characteristic equation evaluated at 1 must be larger than 0. Let's see that. Just substitute 1 and then work out this. You will get 0 0.145. Again, that is larger than zero. That is also fine. Now, third one, again, minus one to the power n, actually. So you get then two. And then the characteristic equation must be evaluated at minus one multiplied by this uh, factor. Again, larger than zero. Let's check that. So substitute minus one, minus one for z. I will get 2.49. Again, larger than zero. So this is now also completed. Now we know for the nth order system we have two n minus three rows. That means four 
because 2 times 2, because then we have a second order, 4 minus 3, 1 row. So we will have in our jury table just one row. But how many constraints do we have? We have the second order, plus 1, so that means 2 plus 1, 3 constraints. And we have now check all the constraints, so we don't have any constraints to check. So we can say this is already checked. We can then develop the jury table, of course. This is this one, but there are no any additional calculations required. So this is not really actually needed. So this is actually just for fun. We can now say no need for a, to generate the jury table since there are only three constraints. So you can actually remember that, let's say, for a second order system. And then again, our conclusion, all the conditions are met. So we have a stable system. So you can see in the fourth method using the jury's stability test, we again have the same conclusion. Why do I have shown this method also? Because kind of an overload to show you also that even a second order system will give you the, uh, the same conclusion using jury's stability test. If you of course have third order or fourth or sixth order, etc., higher order systems, then the power of jury stability test will be of course visible. Now in this case, it is kind of a, uh, let's say overkill. Now, let's then look at the simulation result and then confirm our calculations. Now, MATLAB script, the code, and also the command window. This is what I have generated. This is the Z variable. This is the S variable. This is, our, of course, our transfer function in the Z domain. This is use step G to generate our unit step response. And the pole G will then determine the poles of G. So you can use those commands. Now, if you run this script, I've done this, you get this, you can see it directly, the 0 0.75 and 0 0.42 as the poles. And if you also do pole G, you get the exact same result. So we can say all poles are inside the unit circle, stable system, just running this MATLAB script in command window. Let's look at also the unit step response in MATLAB. This is what we have. We are not really interested in the actual value, but we see it is 12.7, so it is not uh, peaking to over the 100%. We also see that the steady state value is a constant value. So there is some steady state value. It's not blowing up exponentially or some in a different manner. So the conclusion now is the overload is less than 100%. The response reaches a steady state value. So again, a stable system. So again, in a different form, you see in the unit step response for GZ that this system is indeed stable as we have determined before. Now, finally, we'll also look at the root locus plot. And this is the unit, third, unit uh, circle in the Z plane. We have now two poles. You can see it here, 0 0.75 and 0 0.42. But you can also see that here in this label. So we have two poles. And again, confirmation that this system is indeed stable. And again, conclusion is that all poles are inside the unit circle. So in this unit circle, we have our pole, so we are in the safe region. And using root locus plot, we can also see that this is a stable system. All right, this is for this example number two. We have used four different methods, the quadratic formula, using uh, the Z uh, parameters. Then in the second method, we have used the bilinear transformation and then move from the Z plane to the S plane and then use the as parameter and then worked out again using the quadratic formula, the poles. In the third method, we have used root Herbert stability criterion. Again, in the S domain via the root, uh, via the bilinear transformation. And the fourth method, we have directly used the jury stability test. Again, arrive at the same conclusion that this system was stable. All right. I hope this clarifies the situation for the stability analysis of discrete time systems even more. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.